Hi, this is Timothy Priscilla again, and today I'm doing a little business calculus with my Math 1325 class. And this is on the first derivative test. Here's the problem. Uh, we're given a function, and it this function approximates the alcohol, uh, blood alcohol concentration in a person's bloodstream X hours after drinking eight ounces of some hard liquor. The function only, increase, uh, only applies to the interval from zero to five. On what time intervals is the blood alcohol concentration increasing, and on what intervals is, the, uh, is it decreasing? Here, the interval is significant because we're only looking at the first five hours. T equals, X equals zero would be for the person, uh, pretend they didn't, I guess you could think of it as drinking it very quickly, the eight ounces. Then, Five, it's uh, tracking the amount of uh, alcohol in the bloodstream over the five hour period. We know that the alcohol would go into the stomach and it would be absorbed into the bloodstream. And so for a while, the concentration of alcohol in the bloodstream should be increasing. But after a while, the liver kicks in and starts filtering it out so that uh, eventually uh, the alcohol is cleaned out of the uh, blood uh, stream. So uh, we'll find the, we want to know on what intervals is the uh, blood alcohol concentration increasing and on what intervals is it decreasing. I'll do the work here. So we have to find the derivative and um, differentiating we're going to get a point zero zero three x square minus 2 times 0 0.01, 0 0.02x, plus a 0 0.02, the derivative of 0 0.02x is just 0 0.02. Oh, well, we're going to have to set this equal to 0. Well, and that's why I'm groaning. Look at what we're going to have to do. I suppose we could multiply 3 by 1,000 and uh, get rid of the decimals. Maybe y'all would like that better, but either way, now we're going to pick up some uh, uh, fairly large numbers, not that big, and at least they'll be integers. Um, multiplying by 1,000 moves the decimal points three places, so that becomes just a 3x squared minus a 20x plus uh, another 20. So, I can already tell this is not factorable. So if I were you, I would use uh, the quadratic formula. I guess you could complete the square if you wanted to. I don't know why you would want to, but I guess you could. So, A is equal to 3, B is equal to negative 20, and C is equal to positive 20. We call the quadratic formula. So we have we have a, the opposite of b, the opposite of negative 20 is a positive 20, plus or minus negative 20 squared. I can do that in my head. That's 400 minus 4 times a times c. That's a uh, 12 uh, times. Uh, 12 times 20, that's a 240. All over in the denominator, we have a 6. And maybe it'd be a good idea to split all this up right now. I think probably we should uh, split it up so that we have two possible cases. 20 plus the square root of 40 mi 400 minus 240 is a 160 all over 6. And 20 minus the square root of 160 all over 6. Digging out our calculator to evaluate this stuff. Okay, here I got my calculator. 20 plus the square root of 160 all divided by 6. Let's see if you can see this display, my calculator display. 
the problem says to round to the nearest hundredths, so that would be a 5.44. Now, there's a problem with that 5.44. 5.44 is too big for our interval. It's not in the interval. We're only looking over the first five hours from zero to five. So we're going to have to discard that 5.44. We're not going to count that as a critical number. And we have our 20 minus the square root of 160. Be careful. Make sure your calculator does what you want it to do. You'll notice when I'm punching these things in, I generally uh, try to uh, I evaluate the numerator, and then I uh, hit equals, and then I divide by that denominator to make sure the calculator's doing what I want it to do. So I'm getting a 1.23, and that is in the interval from 0 to 5, so this is our critical number. It's the only critical number we have in the problem. Now I'm going to draw a number line, continuing on with the first derivative test. I'm drawing the number line. Remember, we're only looking from 0 to 5. And 1.23 would be over here closer to 0, but I'm going to just put it right there in the middle so I have room to work. We're going to choose a number. First of all, choose a number to the left of 1.23. The easy number to test, I suppose, is 0. That's going to give us a prime equals 0 minus 0 plus 120, not plus 120, plus 0 0.02. That's positive. So increasing. If I had been guessing, I would have said, that knowing the way the liver works, you drink that at hard liquor, your body starts absorbing uh, the alcohol, so the amount of uh, alcohol in your bloodstream is increasing. But eventually, that liver's kicked in and it's filtering it out, so it should start decreasing. So if this is a human being, then I'm 100% confident that it's going to decrease here and be falling. But I suppose you could test something like a 2, a 3, what have you. So you could test a 2. And sure enough, A prime would be negative. So they ask us, when is the function increasing and when is it decreasing? So I'm going to write down increasing. And remember, we're defining increasing. Uh, she's defined increasing and decreasing intervals in terms of open intervals the textbook author. So we're going to say the function is increasing on the open interval from 0 to 1.23 and then it's decreasing on the open interval from 1.23 to 5. And we type that in to my math lab. So once again, this is Timothy Brucella just doing some business calculus for my Math 1325 class. Bye-bye.